Do you believe that um, uh, uh, politics is inherently violent? It depends on your definition of violence, but depending on how you define it, sure. Because I feel like a lot of people, a lot of centrists, idealize this notion of political discourse being able to um, be hashed out in this sort of neutral arena where only uh, rhetoric matters. But in reality, and I can say this very authoritatively because – right. Sorry, I thought I had to – I ate an enormous amount of beans before coming here. It was a um, another power play on my part. I thought it would okay. give me confidence. Um, and I can say this with a degree of authority because all sociological and political science evidence backs this assertion up. Politics is already a game of violence. When – like like political organization is based around – who has the ability to force whom else to do what? Um, even acts of violence which are engaged in legally, um, if facilitated through the political system, could already argued to uh, be argued to be unjust because they are engaged in through a mode of um, uh, um, organization which many people consider to be illegitimate. I don't think there's any way to engage in advocacy for a movement in a nonviolent way. But I feel like the myth that you can do so inherently hampers the left because the right has never operated under such a delusion. Nobody on the alt-right believes that they can achieve their glorious ethnostate in a way which truly complies with the ethics of a free society. Yeah, they're all course, crossing but they their finally, but, they, but they're back. starting to abandon that. Thank God they were more honest. It's actually one of the most refreshing things. I would rather deal with a literal neo-Nazi today than a conservative from 10 fucking years ago. It gets refreshing when somebody says like, I don't care about democracy or I'm not going to pretend that I want equal rights to minorities. Like, and like the, the, the lack of dog whistling and the, and the uh, upfrontness of other beliefs is a little refreshing to me, but yeah, I know, I know what you I mean, agree so. completely. Yeah. At what point do we just get to shoot them? And I'm not being facetious there. When a person and you believe in and uh, uh, what do you call it reciprocatory the, the social contract. Being, so my pro the way that my moral system works is that I will reciprocate values with people who will reciprocate with me. This is where my 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 tenuous uh, justification for eating meat comes from. Right, that that animals will not and cannot reciprocate values with me, so I can slaughter and eat them. Right, this is how all my whole moral system is built. And so this would be the idea between like if somebody you know threatens violence against me, then I can threaten violence or kill them. Right, because they're not reciprocating my value system. Um, so if I'm encountering somebody that won't reciprocate, I guess, some, but it would have to be part of my value system that's important enough not to, 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 to warrant that response. So for instance, like I wouldn't appreciate a stranger coming up to me and hugging me, but if one came up and hugged me, that would be not reciprocating my value system, but I wouldn't, I don't think I would be morally, um, able to like, you kill could that probably person, hug him back. Yeah. But like, I wouldn't be able to kill that person. So like, I don't know what the, I don't know where the line is. I have to think about it more. I'm not sure. I yeah, and like until it's, the problem is that until a hard a argument. Hey. Yeah. Well, until a few weeks ago, like there there are certain fundamental core beliefs that I have about people in general. Um God, maybe this sounds a little Anne Frankish, but like I believe that every person I'm within ready. them has the potential to do almost anything to be like the ninety ninth percentile in anything if they put their mind to it. Um I think that most people are capable of of achieving or aspiring to much higher things than most people are even aware of. Um and that includes like logical, rational thought. But over the past month, when I've engaged with people like JF or Andy Worski, not even as much, but people like the Ian Chong guy, the Tonka. Brittany Venti, the Tonka guy, like these are people that are so fucking far gone that like if they got, if something bad happened to them for like politically related shit, I don't even know if I would give a fuck. Like, I don't even know if I would call that out. If, if like, it would just be like, and well, these are the representatives of their movement too. Yeah, this I know. Isn't like, even that's not even the random run. people that are posting about me on poll or Kiwi Farms or or any of that shit. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. These people are scarcely human. In your debate with vegan gains, you said that because you believe, and I'm going to keep using social construct, contract. Hey, because real quick, just before. because we're bringing this up and because we're bringing his name up in the vein of everybody else, I thought the vegan gains guy, I don't know much about him, but he seemed reasonably intelligent. I feel like I can no, have a conversation he, with him about anything, even though I think he's like a huge anti-SJW. I've never talked to him about those views, but I feel like we could have like an intelligent conversation about him being an anti-SJW. I just wanted to make that clear. He's quite a reasonable person. Yeah, okay. yeah no, he, he seemed quite reasonable in this discussion with you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you took a pretty hard argument to defend because yeah. in the um in the uh, uh at least in the 
philosophical communities which with, with which I am familiar are online and on my campus, mm-hmm. veganism is almost accepted as axiomatically of course. morally correct. Well, to be not a, to be a, a meat eater, you have to necessity but a virtue. Yeah, to be to be a meat eater, you have to reject some very basic parts of your humanity because we're hardwired for empathy, including animal empathy. It's just something we're hardwired for. You know, if you show like a 4 or 5 year old a cat or a dog being tortured and you can hear it screaming and crying, like you have like natural human responses to that. And if you want to take like the meat eating argument, you have to be like a beacon of rationality that has no emotion and it makes a lot of people really uncomfortable so yeah that that's not surprising yeah, and, to me and, and i'm sure i'm sure you understood that in that debate your actual practical real life world uh, views divorced somewhat from the hyper intellectual robot position you had to take oh, to for, consistently defend for me, me no me. Not, no for me not at all but i understand that that's something that i've had to come to terms with over the past few years um well i won't hold you to it sure but in your discussion with him, in your social contract memes, he posed to you the question that if you discovered a, a, an uh, undiscovered tribe. indigenous people mm-hmm. living right, were right, and they were absolutely incapable of, of respecting the social values. contract, mm-hmm. you would be okay with gunning them all down. Yes, correct. Because I would right. consider now, them to be something different than human, in ter- in, I guess, insofar as how I define human, yeah. Right. And to an extent, I agree with that. I think that uh, now, obviously, that's an extreme hypothetical. I don't think things have ever played out that way in real life, though. We've sure. certainly and let me be clear. The reason groups. why this is an extreme hypothetical is because I don't believe there are groups of humans that are incapable of reciprocating some sort of value system. I don't think that, that those types of groups of humans have ever existed in the history of all of mankind. Mm-hmm. What about people who have um, uh, uh, cast aside the belief in fundamental human equality in treating ju- uh, in treating those justly in free speech in in um in a, a, a free trial under the law i'm talking about nazis yeah. i'm talking about people who and yeah you know what a couple of them could be uh, could be convinced otherwise a lot mm-hmm. of them could given enough time and effort but they pose a very real political threat to our country and to our planet now and i feel like they have very willingly cast aside many of the axiomatic principles that we base our social values on yeah sure. and i'm, I'm sorry. not just I, I was, about I was speaking i was speaking Christian. i was speaking specifically in terms of like encountering people in the past sorry that's like encountering tribes of people i don't want somebody to take that statement and be like oh so you think the aboriginal should have been slaughtered in australia or the native american should have been or the you know the aztecs or the uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that. No, no, yeah, no. I sorry. understand. Also, also, you know, historically, for the most part, Aboriginal groups have actually been extremely friendly and welcoming mm-hmm. to um, to to like Westerners who uh, approach them. For the most part, there are exceptions, but I mean, you know, curiosity beckons. These folks are, tend to be dark skinned. You see some pale folk come on. Like, it, it, curiosity, I think, overwhelms the um, uh, tribesmen' desire to fire arrows at uh, unfamiliar things walking towards them. Okay. For the most part, anyway. So. Nazis. We've got people who have willingly cast aside the axioms upon which we base a free society, ones that you and I both hold extremely dear, a fundamental belief in human equality, um, uh, uh, an equal treatment, free speech, fair treatment under the law. These people have done so willingly, and they were born with the tools to make better decisions with their political ideology growing up, though – of course, you know, nobody really makes choices on what yeah, they believe. Yeah, because I've got that hard line determinism, but yeah, but we can yeah, speak about I choices. Know. I understand what you're saying. Go ahead. Right, but I mean, at, at what point do you recognize that the decisions these people have made and the political threat that they pose to the nation, to the world, to their neighbors, at what point does it become severe enough that you have to accept the necessity of extra uh, extra legal forms of violence i'm stepping and i think you and i agree at least to some extent on the legal shit here but really punching nazis where what's discuss i'm not sure i need to talk to richard spencer i feel like if i tweeted at him he'd do it i don't know i mean probably uh, it's you know today is the uh, one year anniversary of him getting punched it's the punch anniversary. Some fucking dipshit tweeted at me and they or sent me a DM and they wanted me to moderate a discussion between <laughs> her and Spencer. Uh, I don't know. Why would you? Why would anyone call you in as a moderator? I don't. I mean, I could moderate do you think really well. That... I think I could moderate really? very well. Yeah, of course. It's just getting people to clarify their points. I I think I understand people's arguments generally better than other people do because I'm not like too busy trying to scream down the other person. Um, I think I could make a pretty good moderator, but I don't know. This person got like hardcore triggered, I guess, because I didn't know who she was. So I don't know. <laughs> Can we get you to moderate the next um, uh, set of primary debates in um, in 2020? I would really appreciate. I would never it be allowed to do that. Like that. That'd be fun, though. Yeah, that would be fun. The 
Uh, okay, I feel like you kind of ducked out of that, though. Why I, I feel like we're on the side, cusp you ask? of a revelation. Punching Nazis. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. I have to. Th- I guess I have to think about it more. I don't know. I feel like um, what I say in this regard might be delegitimized slightly because you know that I'm a political radical, but I've shifted a fair degree away from authoritarianism mm-hmm. um, over the past couple of years. I try to think of political violence in a more practical sense now in regards to what kind of societal behaviors are being encouraged when you engage in those forms of political violence. The the Nazis in this country, um, excluding those which are embedded in the government and in the police force, of which there are many, the ones who are just your rank and file citizens, the people who have the exact same legal rights as me, these people are for the most part uneducated, confused, and scared. Yeah, um, the, like- and Oh yeah. My the with the problem that I have with everything is the, the it's the lack of an objective morality. This is just where I become uncomfortable making all of yeah. these statements. So like let, so like let's like I could give a few hypotheticals where I'm okay with punching Richard Spencer, okay? If everybody shared my moral system, um I would be so much quicker to jump on board with political violence. I would I would do it in a heartbeat. If I knew that most people or all people in the United States shared my moral system, then I would endorse political violence and extra legal violence 100% because I would know for sure that the only people they would be targeting would be people that I would morally deem unworthy of moral consideration. I was I used moral twice there, but like people that I would deem unworthy of moral consideration. Um, and in that case, I would say, fine. Go for it, because because the people that are that the violence is being enacted on don't aren't worthy of moral consideration. However, um, the problem is that when I come out, if I say something like I'm okay with Richard Spencer being punched, I would I have to add that caveat because there are a lot of people that would want to punch him who would want to punch a whole bunch of other people where, that I wouldn't be okay with punching. Does that make sense? No, I agree completely, and that's what I mean by what kind of behaviors you'd be encouraged. If you start punching people you disagree with, and for and and for all of the things Richard Spencer has done and said, and for all the arguments I could make against his uh, political views, at the end of the day, I disagree with him is about all I can say in regards to justification for punching him on like a one-on-one in a vacuum context. Wait, can you wait? Hold on, wait. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Oh, I mean to say that at the end of the day, regardless of the reasons for why I punch richard spencer and regardless of how odious his political beliefs are it would be seen as an act of me punching somebody i disagree with and that would implicitly encourage the punching of people other people don't disagree with oh sure i'm sure, one yeah. of those okay, people yeah. many people don't disagree yep, with. i agree i agree okay i haven't gotten punched in the face since like eighth grade i don't know if i could take the hit that well to be perfectly honest <laughs> right getting punched kind of kind of hurts it's not like in the movies right no, you got yeah. punched recently. <laughs> Not recently, but if you get hit in the face, you're out pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, it kind of hurt. I mean, I'm pretty big guy. I feel like I just get knocked the fuck over, though. I don't want to get punched in the face, but I want other people to get punched in the face. So I've had to develop a, and you know, pardon me for sounding pretentious. I've had to develop a, um, a set of principles and of ways in which those principles could be practically enacted, um, which allow for the punching of Nazis and don't allow for the punching of me and my soft jaw. And I feel like these are reconcilable concepts. I feel like even in the absence of a system with objective morality, it's still very possible to collectively agree upon certain criteria against which um, you're more justified in engaging in political violence or do you disagree with that do you think that there's no way to hammer out a set of like informal rules like yes these are the people that should be targeted and these are the people who should not i mean you can't we've already done it to some extent with our legal system right when you talk about things like murder or stealing or espionage or something right what if I, well that's yeah and I, I think that's actually kind of the point i was going to get to uh i consider it uh, uh simply a matter of self-defense and i feel like this is a justifiable stance to take because it fits in line with a set of legal uh concepts that we already have in place now if a nazi goes out and advocates for xenophobia advocates for racism advocates for white nationalism advocates for the deportation of people they disagree with that 
is an expression of political hey, violence Steve, against I notice people you of give color mod status to relevant you go up streamers. on stage and start uh, uh, outing trans people me mod even, even though I'm not start relevant. talking about how they're actually Mostly men or making... women. They don't serve to go in these bathrooms. And if you go in the bathroom that you believe uh, uh, isn't the one in which they belong, you're free to beat them up. These people are engaging in political violence. And violence can be defended against. Acts of violence against those people aren't retaliatory. They're defensive. Uh, I saw you shake your head on stream. Oh, because somebody donated something retarded. Sorry. Or ah, well, still. That, that's the how problem. The problem is that, like, let's say that I'm somebody who just believes that men and women don't, or, or that trans people shouldn't get their own bathrooms or whatever. Does that make me then susceptible to violence? If I, I don't know. That? I mean, we can we can distinguish uh, uh, in a in a physical altercation between somebody weakly like slapping your back when you turn around and somebody decking you in the face. If we can distinguish between severity and a physical altercation, I think we can distinguish between severities in a uh, political altercation. Can we though? That's the. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I don't know. I mean, I don't think that the harm incurred um, uh, in a physical altercation is any more objective than the harm incurred in a political altercation. I think that it's easy to say that the potential for violence incurred by people advocating for the institution of a white ethno state is far greater than the political um, harm incurred by people who are saying, uh, you know, I took a look at these IQ charts, blacks are kind of low on it, you know? I mean, both shitty, both should be addressed, but one of those is a far greater uh, condemnation of the liberties of people of color in this country. Yeah. What do you think about that? I mean, I, just, I don't disagree, but it's just looking at it pragmatically it just seems like this kind of an idea would be a nightmare to implement that people would take it too far way too quickly way too easily i think that there's a potential for that but i feel as though many of the ways in which it could be taken too far have already been taken too far like take for example leftism now i think that this i think this is actually a a, a, a pretty astute comparison i'm a leftist i'm a communist i believe that the property rights of the wealthy should not be respected i feel that their um uh, uh, assets should be seized from them and that many of them should be executed for crimes against the workers of this country that if i go up on stage that's and pretty, i express to be fair, that's views, a, just to be clear that's a pretty hard line communist stance i don't think most communists would say that the wealthy should be executed but go but go ahead well for crime i mean it, name you know there are no businessmen in this country who have gotten their wealth legitimately it's all built on thievery um i i think that the execution is not so much about retaliation as it is about preventing a counter-revolution. But nonetheless, these are views which I hold. I uh, probably won't be enacting them tomorrow, but, you know, nonetheless something I believe in. If I go up on stage and I advocate for these views, I am undoubtedly enacting a, a form of political violence against the wealthy folk of this country. Well, fuck. Well, and no, I hold on, because now I have to think, because you don't reciprocate my personal views now. How much money do I need to make before you would execute me? <laughs> None of your none of your wealth, not a dollar of it, has been well. Okay, I can't say that. We all of our wealth in the Western world is built yeah. On the processor of my computer labor. is built on the backs of fucking poor Chinese but kids or whatever fabrication plants in China. Nobody's, and shit. Advocating, nobody's advocating for the execution of people who got their pedicure at some uh, ditzy Chinese nail salon off a of third street because they were brought in from Thailand or I don't know. Nobody's advocating for these things. I think that there's a pretty hard line between people who have benefited from Western imperialism and the robber barons in this country who have okay. stolen the I'm wealth saying of the that workers. You're, we're that line. You may, <laughs> okay. There are soft lines. A lot of people think that we built these hard lines in, in existing social um, – and legal structures, but in reality, all of these divisions are quite soft. They seem hard because we've lived with them our whole lives, and because we've heard arguments in favor of them, which justify the edge cases, which make it all seem reasonable. But in reality, all of these lines upon formation were quite soft, and they had to be argued for and against quite persuasively before they started to be taken for granted. I feel the same way about political violence. I feel that it seems a soft line now, and it's complicated. Mistakes will be made, but... Sure. This I can help you before. out. If you, are you familiar with the continuum policy? Or, I'm sorry, uh, the continuum uh, policy? Yes. Okay, but, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's another way of saying so I know that we have the same. 
Um, somebody argues that red color. and blue are distinct colors, and then somebody says, okay, well, point to me on the rainbow exactly where it changes from, like, red to orange or whatever. If you can't name that exact part, then red and orange don't exist. And then you would say, well, just because I can't point out exactly when it happens doesn't mean that I can't say that red and orange are two distinct separate colors or whatever. It's like a continuum fallacy. Um, oh, another that's way this not what is, I thought it was. Yeah, but that's another a way this fallacy. is stated is um, Loki's Wager, um, where Loki loses a bet to somebody, or a guy named Loki, it's not the god, I think it's just called Loki's Wager. He loses a bet to somebody, and he bets his head. Um, when they come to collect, um, they go to cut his head off, and then he argues, you can cut my head off, but you cannot take a single inch of my neck. And they're not able to determine exactly where his neck ends and his head begins, so they walk away with nothing, is another way of stating it. Just because you can't name exactly where the neck ends and the head begins doesn't mean you don't have a head or a neck, right? Yeah, sorry. Right, I think that's a wonderful fact. Fallacy and, and yeah. apropos of everything, there actually. You go. Yep. Um, okay. I, I, but but I, I just want to put forward the, the knowledge that these are um, these are considerations that I don't take lightly. I'm no longer the full blown political revolution now. Gun them down the streets, uh, 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 hardcore anarcho syndactylist that I was uh, uh, two hours before this conversation began. I am now the reasonable, uh, practical anarcho syndactylist that uh, uh, considers the, you know, practical ramifications of political violence. I just think that, and I'm not, it's it's not as though if I convince you of this, you're going to go out in the street with a Mauser and start taking down people with, with uh, white skin, you know, mm-hmm. from like a street corner or anything. But I feel like having an efficacious attitude towards these sorts of things is really helpful in the long run because it helps us develop a clearer sense of the, means and methods by which we can oppose what is a very real threat to this country do you disagree with that um i don't know because it sounds like we agree with a lot here principally in 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 regard to uh legal forms of extra rhetorical uh, where's, where's my phone and why is it hold up I found my phone, and I found out why it was ringing. But anyway, um, in regards to legal forms of extra rhetorical action, you, you and I seem to agree these are already things which are um, engaged in. They don't have to happen to the exclusion of reasoned debate, and there is a certain degree of necessity by which they should be engaged in because um, – Political rhetoric isn't as effective against people who are, by definition, intellectually dishonest, as Nazis are. And in terms of extra-legal political violence, well, I am not by any means arguing for the legalization or, like, the state-approved execution of folks I disagree with. I don't think I don't think the state should have anything to do with this. I nonetheless think that there is um uh, um. A the pretty solid argument to be made for society's state. ability Execute to draw all. a decently hard line on which kinds of political rhetoric are in genuine need of retaliatory violence and which ones aren't. I mean, do you disagree with any of that? I don't know. Like, it's just two separate – the pragmatic versus the philosophical is just – it's impossible for me to reconcile these two positions. Like this is my big hang-up on all of this. Like if we lived in a perfect like ethical vacuum, like I could agree – whoops. I could agree with everything you're saying. But like the, the, the point of view that you're giving me now is the same one that I had a while ago where um, like – Let's look at my view. Let's look at my view on language, okay? I don't think that um, I don't think that people should care about what other people say about them because when people say words about me, it doesn't bother me, right? This is something that I, at my core, I believe to be true. I don't think you should let another person's words bother you, and and I don't let other people's words t- generally bother me unless they make fun of my League of Legends gameplay. Um, so, so therefore. From, from that position, you know, if you go and look up old videos of me online, I'll say things like, I believe in absolute freedom of speech. As long as you're not threatening to kill somebody, everything should be sayable. You should be able to say whatever you want. It doesn't matter. No consequences, blah, blah, blah. This is a position that I would have taken. Now, when I took that position, I still believe that that position is philosophically defensible. I absolutely do. And I believe it internally. This is still like a core belief that I have. However... 
the problem that I ran into is that all of the people, all of the little fuckboy gamer fucks that stood up next to me and said that they agreed with me, that they loved what I was saying, what I found out was that all of those guys were fucking hypocrites, that they didn't actually believe in what I said. So here's an example. I think that you should be able to laugh at yourself no matter what. I think it's an invaluable life skill. And when I say things like that, people will jump up, especially especially white straight guys will jump up and go, yeah, you should absolutely be able to make fun of anything and make fun of yourself. Yeah, for sure. But then anytime anybody makes fun of fucking gamer bros, they're the most sensitive fucking cupcakes in the universe, right? When I see threads go up, when I spend half my life saying like, I don't care what the main character in a game looks like. If you need the main character to look black or be a woman for you to relate to them, I don't know. I think that says something about you. Deep inside, I still feel that way, but a lot of people came up and agreed with me when I said that. And then like when that new FIFA game gets released, the third most upvoted comment is, the main character's brown. How can I ever relate to him? And all these gamer bros jumped on in agreement. And it's like, oh, so you guys don't actually mean any of that shit. You just say it because you're the assumed default. So that's the only reason you agree with any of the shit that I say. Do, do you under, so do you understand so that so like this is where all of my problems came I understand with where, completely yeah where basically i have my philosophical positions that i espouse and everybody supposedly i had a lot of people that agreed with me in those positions but what i found out was people don't actually agree with these positions they just do it because it's convenient for them and they actually don't give a fuck about any of the core tenets of the position they're incredibly easily threatened such that when you see a female main character or a black main character like at the new Star Wars movies people lose their fucking shit so everything they said in the past about you shouldn't worry about who the main character is is completely hypocritical and totally fucking baseless so what I'm worried about right and so after I grow a little bit older a little bit wiser I see how full of shit the average fuckboy is right and now I realize okay well I'm gonna have to advocate for a totally different set of positions because you people are fucking stupid i don't want to get into a position similar to that where i go hey you know what i think political violence should be encouraged against certain groups of people that you know don't share some of these core moral tenets because i can totally see myself going down that route and then two years from now i have a bunch of people that are fans of mine who are like hey destiny you know there's this one guy um that that was talking about charles murray's uh the bell curve book we totally found his fucking work and we got him fired because we called his boss and said that he was a huge racist it was so funny and it's like no that's not what I want at all. That's totally fucking crazy. You know, that that's the problem that I'm having reconciling, like, this ideal philosophical world where I think I could agree with you versus the pragmatic implementation of such where I would get a lot of people that would start to come to my corner that would be really cool to hear that political violence message but would be utilizing it in a way that I would absolutely disagree with. I completely agree with you, but I think you've got it 100% wrong. I think you've taken the uh, – uh, applied that um – analogy to the wrong side of things i think that and i'm in agreement with you on this in a purely philosophical 100 percent hypothetical in a vacuum sense i am in favor of the free marketplace of ideas i believe that if you preside upon the assumption that human beings are rational and capable of having their minds changed ideas should be hashed out in a non-violent arena in which the best ideas should be allowed to win yeah, but then and you get people like andy that host debates with neo-nazis who have five different neo-nazis on to argue against one fucking idiotic wannabe left-leaning sargon of a god and it's like the, yeah Right, and because the marketplace say, of ideas, and the, the, the marketplace of, of ideas the meme goes. Yes, we believe too. Yeah, the marketplace of ideas is a huge meme as well. It's a huge meme because nobody actually. Because when you look at what people think of the marketplace of ideas, they point to dumb fucks like Dave Rubin, who bring people on completely unchallenged and just give them a platform to spew whatever fucking hatred they want without any challenge to any assertions that they make at all. Uh, right, the, and this is and this is why. And when you advocate for these things, for no political violence, for the free market place of ideas you'll find yourself in the company of nazis i yeah. mean this is why you had the not after charlottesville they had that free speech rally it was just a white nationalist rally they just called it the free speech rally you constantly hear them decry leftists hate and free speech because they want to uh, uh de-platform right wingers uh these people don't believe in free speech there is no way to institute an ethno state or a nazi or a fascist government while still valuing free speech these things are inherently antithetical they're just jumping on to that um because it gives that, them a secure uh, place to preach from, right? Exactly. Just the same way that it gives uh, uh, gamer bros an air of like enlightened rationalism when they say, ah, nobody should mind what, what people say about me, but then you make a joke about dude bros and they freak out. Mm -hmm. I think you find yourself in problematic company on either side of things. But I know that right now, the alt-right and the Nazis are a problem. And I see this whole free speech malarkey take place every single day I'm online. But as for this overzealous left-wing 
uh, uh, targeting people who maybe kind of have some problematic views but probably don't deserve to have their lives ruined. It happens. I tried to do it to you. It's definitely a problem. But is it a problem to the same extent when we've got Trump in office, when we ha- had Bannon um, on the, the uh, uh, in, in the cabinet? cabinet. Yeah, yeah, at the reins. I I feel like in this instance, the worst company is on the side of the, uh, the absolutist free speech argument. And I think that if you jump on board with the conditional political violence memes and find people are fucking it up a couple years down the line, the worst potential consequences for that timeline are still a hell of a lot better than what we've already experienced in this one. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Because, like I said, I would still be... I would in a vacuum be 100% in favor of the free marketplace of idea memes. But you can't, I I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a leftist defend their views by citing the existence of free speech in this country. And leftists have been. Yeah, you just cut out. Hello? Uh Uh-oh, the bourgeois. Did I cut out? Oh, yeah, sorry, what? Oh, no, leftists have been targeted by far more political violence than any of the right have in this country. Obviously, most of it took uh, uh, place in the earlier half of the 20th century. You had the um, the um, the Pinkerton uh, attacks against union rallies. You had anarchists and socialists being literally gunned down in the street and sometimes bombed by the state. In the 50s, you had the... Uh, um, you know, like the blacklisting of people who are publicly left-leaning. Um, these are very real forms of state-sponsored political violence against the left-leaning. But I, and not once, not today, and not during those times, did I ever see them rally behind the idea of free speech. And that's for two reasons. For one, they know that if they're at a point at which the government is already targeting them for their political views, they understand they're being targeted um, outside of the purview of the philosophical basis upon which free speech is justified. The people targeting them don't care. And for two, because they understand that freedom of speech is meaningless in a society organized as one such as this. And that's an entirely separate set of memes. But I I do think that leftists tend not to expect much from this government um, in regards to the government's willingness to uphold freedom of speech for like uh, divergent political groups for because we fundamentally oppose the foundations upon which this government was built at any rate it's something the right does more than the left even though the left has been targeted far more than the right with all that said i don't know i, I kind i kind of feel like i've got you with one foot on the uh, conditional political violence train while engaging with so many of these people is, and then dealing with the crazy amounts of fucking harassment that I've dealt with are moving me closer to it, yeah, which is probably not right? good because it sounds more emotionally driven than rationally driven, but I'm not sure. Or it could be that your perspective has been broadened now that you've been given a taste of the kinds of argumentation that these folk engage in uh, towards other leftist figures. Maybe. Now you understand where the stakes are at. I don't know. I mean... um, I don't know. This isn't like a revenge quest for you or anything. It's, uh, I, I think that, and I'll be the first to say, um, I know a fair amount about sociology. It's my major. Got one more semester to go. This, however, this is more political theory. Do you and think it's something that, that I've this, wanted. Is this worth violence? Somebody you just linked this tweet in my chat. Let me check. I hate these people, dude. I can't express like good words how much I hate these people. Oh. I mean, no meme. Yes, if I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shed a tear or decry anyone who shot her. In it's her so state. funny, dude. I was laughing so hard when Lauren Southern and Tara McCarthy were mad because everybody was calling them fucking whores and shit in their movement. Like, who, who, who'd have thought that the group of people that were advocating for ethno states also hated women? <laughs> what? Who? No when one. Are they gonna no turn one. On JF? No one could have seen this coming. Um, why would they turn on JF? Isn't he? Uh, he ain't white. He's Quebecois. He? He's pretty white, right? They're not. white. White? Are you fucking kidding me? French Canadians—they're like the. They're white. Mm, French Canadians are white. They're the dirtiest white. whites. Dude, have you seen the people that I argue against? Tara McCarthy is like half Indian and half Jewish. She's white enough for the ethno state. Nicholas Fuentes is white enough for the ethno state. The um the B- ruined brave or whatever guy is literally half black. Like, <laughs> I mean, the the bar for being white enough for the ethno state is set pretty fucking low at this point, my dude. 
yeah, we might all be good. Eventually, it's going to be like like uh, uh, full on Nigerians or white enough. Great, yeah. But as and long then, as you're preaching the white that, shit, I'm good for that. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm I'll say it on stream. I'm okay with a white ethno state if we redefine everyone to be white. Pretty much. I mean, that's yeah. Jesus fuck. Have you ever read up on how, um, in like a socio political sense, whiteness has always been defined by exclusion rather than inclusion? Yeah, whiteness isn't a group of. Yeah, 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 that's actually it's the big meme because when Blair White tweets so many of these articles about white genocide and shit, I, I'm curious, so I actually go and I read the articles, and that's usually why I see people, at least in academia and people that write editorials and shit, are usually advocating for the removal of the white label is because it's it's literally the most arbitrary label in existence that's only ever been used to exclude certain people from from different rights. That's essentially all it is. Like our definition of white has expanded so much over the past 250 years that it's that I get people like Jontron, who's fucking Middle Eastern, coming onto my stream talking about how only white people should be allowed in the united states and it's like interesting what was your last name again like jesus yeah you'd think that if the white jafari your race we have a slightly harder he sounds like the guy he sounds like the bad guy from fucking uh aladdin, aladdin. Yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry john jafar yeah e. whatever I, no meme though i'm totally okay with rami millennial getting shot in her sleep stop Sometimes stop I, I, we I, don't do I, violence here no, we do not do we, we do not okay, advocate for violence on this twitch stream this is a family mm. friendly non-terms of service violating okay i think that she should get shot full of a syringe of good ideas metaphorically speaking okay that's what you okay, meant right fine. I'll, put yes. it, I'll put it this way okay she should get if vaccinated me- against stupidity i agree with you <laughs> if a meteor shower uh, 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 no, let's move on. The I honestly don't know what I'll get banned for anymore, so I would rather just move. I'm not okay. even joking. Okay. Sorry, okay. Yeah. okay. I just came off a okay. seven day no. ban for some like really fucking stupid shit. So, just, no, no, my no. channel I is going to be spam fucking... reported. Yeah, my channel will be spam reported for literally anything I say here now. So, I have to be it super was careful. hysterical. I tried what, what you said, I mean, not the ban. Oh, I tried thanks, to find a clip for it to show my girlfriend because, I mean, that was some you really deployed some excellent and thanks, efficacious political yep. violence there. I but I couldn't. It all got. Deleted. I, I couldn't find the clip. Uh, yeah. But, okay, so so I, I'm not going to name anyone. I will say, however, I think that we oh, are... Oh, shit. There's a, I see you in my chat, Irut. There's a staff in my chat right now waiting to push okay, the button. We're, sh- He's we're waiting to push clean, the button, Irish Lighter. You need to chill out, okay? He's we're clean. There. We're clean, okay? We're clean. We're wholesome over here. We're going to be advocating for political hugs now. Okay. okay. So, what else did we have to talk okay. about? What else? Or what was there? Do we have any topics left you wanted to cover? Yeah, there was uh, uh, one. Oh wait, hold on a second. Sorry. Yeah. Um. But <laughs> all right, this sweats to me. But um, yeah. So so in regards to um, the application of political violence, I feel like we have. Do you, so earlier you agreed with my statement that violence is inherently political, or am I misremembering? Oh, that you mean that politics is inherently violent? Yes. Um, uh, I, depending on your definition of violence, yeah, sure, yeah. Because, and, and I understand this is principally a libertarian argument, the mm-hmm. whole uh, thugs with guns thing, but at the end of the day, all sweeping political action, everything from a, 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 as minor to a change in an ordinance made by a city council to a uh, an executive order from the president of the United States. Mm-hmm. All of these are fundamentally backed up by the promise of state force should these um, uh, uh, guidelines not be met. And what's more, and, and I feel like this, that's just the punishment for living in a society these days. I feel like, and I, I'm going to lose my anarcho-syndactylist card for this, I feel like it's reasonable to assume that in a society as, co- some, as complex as ours, people ought to figure uh, um ought to follow the rules or get punished for it. Like, in in this society, I understand the necessity of that. However, yeah, aren't you supposed to do server outages at, like, 3 a.m. when important people aren't having their important political talks? I mean, it's 2 a.m. on the East Coast, right? Fuck the East Coast. Damn. Cold over there. Except in Florida, I guess. That's part of the East Coast. Okay, so wait, really quickly, um... Before I guess I finish my point because I feel like we're drawing towards a conclusion. Could I um, uh, really quickly address a particularly odious and stupid comment I saw in the chat? Yeah, go for it. 
I don't remember who it was because this was quite a while ago. Um, so if everyone with an IQ below 40 could post, so I could try and pick it out amongst the names. There was somebody there who said, lol, city ordinance, how is that political? If you make a bunch of noise past 8 p.m., at most they'll just give you a fine or send you to jail. Oh, what the fuck do you think political violence fucking means? I don't what happens if you don't pay the fine? What happens if you refuse to go to jail? What what the fuck do you think political violence is? You stupid piece of shit. Whoa. Okay. Oh, this is why leftism will never work hey, in this. Calm down. Let's All love right. each other, okay? Yeah, okay. okay. All right. They know who they are. Okay. <laughs> so to, fa- to, 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 to explain this a little bit nicer, I think um, the idea is that most form of politics involve violence in one way or another when the state is involved because everything will eventually come down to state enforced violence to enforce certain kinds of things. Um, and, and, and political measures are normally um, like force people to do things as a result of that, which you can argue is like philosophically aggressive. This is where libertarians get like the taxation is theft meme from, right? Yeah, it's it's generally used as a kind of libertarian argument, but I think it's pretty fundamental to um, leftist philosophy as well because you have to rather than separating. Um, the forms of discourse into peaceful, rhetoric-based, rational, um, ideologically driven discourse and violent discourse, what leftists see it as, as legitimate and illegitimate violent discourse, because all forms of participation through the political system are by definition violent, because all forms of advocacy and all forms of um, legislation fundamentally can be reduced towards the attempt to control the actions of another, which is in itself an act of aggression. I feel like the myth of non-violent political advocacy is a sort of spook thrown about by centrists and dishonestly by the right as an attempt to delegitimize things the left say things like violent revolution things like the platforming fascists um but it's not rooted in any like consistent or legitimate um political theory and I, um it's something that i take grave issue with so you're in agreement with me in that regard then yeah I, yeah I, I, how can in I regards to, that that all politics is somewhat violent depending on your definition of violence yeah right and therefore all forms of political advocacy and legislation are in themselves if not violence at least a call to violence sure all i just want to be clear i just want to be clear that the, the you, or you have to understand that the way you're using violent there is a lot different than how most people use the word violent, right? We're talking in a That's philosophical true. I should sense. clarify. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just to clarify In, in, in violence, I don't mean, like, punching a dude. Yeah, yeah, I mean exactly. that you're aggressing upon another person's We'll agency. set off a chain of events that could inevitably lead to violence to enforce some sort of state-mandated action, right? Yeah, yeah even the most banal um, uh, forms of political advocacy are in some way tied to the fundamental assertion of potential violence down the line. So when you make this distinction, it's really important to reconcile the uh, um, fallacious thought that many centrists and libertarians sort of conduct with the actual real practical consequences of political advocacy. There's no such thing as non-violent advocacy versus violent advocacy. There is only legitimate violent advocacy versus illegitimate violent advocacy. So in that regard, I believe that we have already stepped over the line that so many people are afraid to step over, that of political violence. In a sense, everything we do is an act of violence. Uh, it's merely a matter of degree and a matter of moral and philosophical consistency and legitimacy. Um, I think that if people were more cognizant of this fact, or at least aware of the arguments behind it, it would be easier to bring people on board the um, reasonable political violence memes. Yeah, possibly, sure. I, I feel like we're in agreement on almost everything here. Um, is can I can I count on you with the next Antifa rally in my in my town? Where where you at? I'll think about it. Okay, I just know that I'll disagree with ninety nine percent of the fuckers in the crowd. So that's what keeps me from going. But what what do you think you disagree with them about? I've met, I've talked with Antifa. I am Antifa. I mean, not like it's, it's not really much of anything. You just show up occasionally. But um, what do you think you disagree with them on? Aren't most aren't a lot of Antifa people leftists? Literally. We seem to agree on everything we've discussed here, and I'm a leftist. Well, because we're talking politically, not economically. <laughs> uh, I, th- I think a lot of... Um, like, anything economic- you talk about, like, executing, like, the bourgeois, or, like, seizing private property, these are things that I'm very, very far removed from. 
I feel like if you and I had enough time and if you had enough hot chocolate beforehand, I could get you to be very sympathetic to um, I can be sympathetic, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be on board with murdering people because of wealth they've acquired, even if they've well, gone through an exploitative system. Exploitive? Exploitative? Exploitive? Well, it's again, it's not so much a matter of retribution as it is a pragmatic consideration of the harm these people do into society and the, um, the uh, obstacle that they are towards forward progress. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like, like, again, you know, I understand. I come from an upper-middle-class family. I was born in Beverly Hills. I understand, I think, to some fair degree, that my initial success in life, my privilege, was born almost entirely from the subjugation of um, of, uh, of the um, global south. I mean, I understand I, that my fortune, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, was built upon the skulls of others. I don't think I should be shot for that. I mean, I could be a little bit um, uh, biased in that regard. But yeah, I know. I know. Pretty hypocritical of me. But I, 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 I don't know. We'll talk about that someday. I'll yeah, get sure. mm, I'll get you on board. You've been you've been sliding left. I think it's gonna. I think you've got a while to go. Economically, I think I've I think I've moved further right. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe maybe. In what the future, about who knows? Maybe we could get some market socialism going. You can have all your globalism. You can have all of your uh, uh, um, fucking capital memes. But it just it just we just have a democratic workplace. How's about that, huh? Hmm, democracies are slow. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Ethical though. Uh, uh, all right. Anyway, nah, it, I don't know if democracy yeah. is necessarily ethical, but <laughs> we've got the tyranny of the majority. Okay. There's a lot Here. of memes that go on with that. But right. okay. I'll put it. I'll put it this way. Remember your <laughs> casino job. Yeah. Maybe if your firing had been determined by the um, by the respect and camaraderie of your fellow peers, rather than by the tyranny of your supervisor, you could have still worked that job, I mean, and then you wouldn't have this excellent job where you get six know. figures. I don't know. I mean, what if I got into a fight with the union leader or some shit, and everybody turned all the reps and everybody against me? I don't know, man. Yeah, and then if you get in an actual physical altercation with the leadership of the company, rather than fighting one CEO, you're actually fighting a group of burly leftist union leaders. I mean, in that case, you know, you're kind of fucked. Maybe, dude. Okay. It's been good talking with you. All right. I love you, buddy. Have fun. Be careful. Stay safe. Love you, too. Sorry for harassing you so much prior to this no, conversation. No, that's fine. Keep doing it, and I'll talk to you. I just I get so many messages that shit slips through. So, but No worries, man. Have a great night. Yep. Have fun.